Hi everyone, my name is Marcin and welcome in another Photoshop tutorial. It's been a while, I was really busy working on a lot of things and today I'm coming to you with a new amazing tutorial on skin retouching. This is actually something that's going to improve your skin retouching if it will be used in the right way. Don't use this as a main technique, but as a technique that can slightly even out your skin pores. I'm talking about the inverted high pass. I already did the tutorial on inverted high pass before, and now I'm coming with much more improved version with the ways of working with this technique as no one was working, or at least I didn't see that. This is the image by Lesia Lehman. So thanks to her for sharing the images. You can find her images on Model Mayhem if you're looking for something to practice. So let's start. We need to create two copies, the same as in the case of frequency separation. It's a very similar process. So I'm going to create a stamp on the top. Uh, as you can see, I was cleaning up a little bit. So this is already cleaned the image after cleaning with healing brush. So I'm going to press Alt or Option, Control or Command Shift and E to create a stamp on the top. I'm going to call this one as a blur. I'm, I'm hoping I'm doing this right way. And now let's create the other one. And this one we're going to call inverted hyper, so IHP. Let's start with the blur. Similar as with frequency separation, as actually the same as with frequency separation, we need to blur out the skin till the point we will not be able to see any details. So I want to see the contours of the skin, but I don't want to really be able to see the details. And I think around, um, for this image, it will be around 15. In this case, as you can see, it's blurring out really nicely. So hit OK, and then I'm going to the top layer, which I called this IHP. And I'm going to image, apply image, and here we are. Now you should really be focused. I, I believe maybe you've seen my previous um, tutorial on frequency separation, so you know a little bit. As a source, the layer over here will be blur. So we need to get the information from the blue layer. And about blending, this is important thing. I'm working on 16 bit image because it was raw image. So if you're working with raw images, you have 16 bit. In this case, we set blending as an add and here always the value will be scaled to offset zero and this box invert will be checked. If you're working with eight bit image, Blending will be as a subtract, and as you can see, scale will be two offset one to eight, and this won't be checked. So remember the values. Of course, you can stop this video if you missed something. And then hit OK. So we have this inverted high pass layer now. I don't need this blur layer anymore. This is not important to me. I'm going to inverted high pass. Right now, I'm changing blending mode into linear light. And what happened right now, we got this really ugly blurred area over here. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to press Control or Command and I to invert my high pass. And now better be really, really focused on what we're doing now. Now this layer, I'm going to convert to smart object. Why I'm converting this into smart object? Because it's going to give me absolutely full control on the future changes that I'm going to apply into this image. It's taking a while. Let's wait a little bit. It's processing. It shouldn't process that long. Okay. Once again, okay, we have this smart object right now. So how smart object works? Whatever we're going to apply as a filter, having this layer as a smart object, 
we will be able to change this over and over just by opening our smart smart filter as you can see we can we can change this all the time that's why i i always build smart object here i always convert this into smart object it's just giving me possibilities to edit my filters later but let's talk about theory what i need to do i need to do the thing that i already did before so i'm going to blur and gaussian blur and usually when people teach how to use inverted high pass they say take the third point of what you did before however what as you can see it's totally breaking down our skin texture so what i'm doing in this case i'm just grabbing the radius and i'm going up i'm going up very close to the value i said before so we set the value at 15 before i could go right now with 13 or 14 or even 15 something around this area i'm not going above that because then results won't be really visible but let's go with 13 uh, i could probably apply less but i want to keep it visible for you so let's zoom this a little bit and our image changed already but it didn't change in a really nice way you can see the skin tones are really nicely even out though we also even out the edges which is not something i really like and it's not something really wanted what i'm doing then i'm creating a layer mask and i'm going to invert this as a black to invert this of course after you create this you need to press ctrl or command and i the same as before this is process to invert always ctrl or command and i on your keyboard so now I mask the effect I applied here. And also remember this effect can be changed all the time if you're going to think it's too soft or too strong by opening the Gaussian blur. And all of this is possible by the fact that we change this layer into smart object, we converted this. Okay, after you invert this into the black layer, I'm choosing the brush and the white color of the brush. So if I will be painting on this black layer mask, I will be bringing back the details, uh, the, the effect that is visible on this layer. In this case, this inverted high pass. So I can change the flow a little bit down to 50%, so I will have a bit more control and I'm painting with soft edged brush. So the areas that I want to even out for sure will be here, the, the forehead a little bit. And also, as you can see, I have some, some rough skin tones over here. So I'm just finding the, the areas that have rough shadows or skin tones, and I'm trying to paint over it. So as you can see, it's not really complicated process. And remember, this is not the technique that you can retouch all of your image. This is very important. This is the technique that will be super helpful for you and help you resolve some issues that you could have and of course you can apply more of this you know as you can see there is small change right now but you can see you can see already the difference that, that it's doing so we can paint a little bit more to get the effect we want and that's how how it will be looking I don't have really rough areas on the chest so I won't be painting that much over here because the chest looks way better compared to the face so i did a bit of work on the face and you can see already a difference especially over here on this side like nicely changed and that's how the mask in this case looks like of course to have even more control you can duplicate the process and create more all of these layers i'm going to change the name so in the case you want to apply more of these layers, of course you can. You can do this with more control. Uh, to do this, I'm just going to use the action I made for this. So our work will be a bit quicker. And also you can get these actions if you will want. All together with my retouching course, the link is in the description and you get around 30 retouching actions as well. 
So feel free to check this out. Um, I think it's really worth. I think it's really worth. So it's taking a while right now. And this time I will set radius at 14. Same process. If I just want to apply more and more of this effect, I'm just going to, to do this this way, of course. So I'm not going to change the values, as you can see, using Gaussian Blur, but I rather prefer to create another layer. And this will be, this gives you much more control for, for this sort of thing. And, and trust me when I'm talking this. So let's put this to the group. I'm going to call this IHP. Have a look at the skin texture. That's before we preserve the skin texture, but we even out the rough shadow areas, the rough tones out of this image. Before and after. Really little change, but give huge difference for your final results.